Hello and welcome to another remote lesson in physics. We're going to start today, as usual, with four starter questions. Number one. List two features of the national grid. Number two. What two things are linked by the national grid? Number three. What is sublimation? And finally, four, how do particles in a gas move? Pause your tape now and write your answers. Once you've written your answers, we can continue. So looking at the answers now, the national grid, of course, is made up of transformers and cables. It links power stations with consumers. A Houses, businesses, schools, etc. Sublimation is a state change from solid to gas. And two parts to this one particles move randomly, one mark, and at a range of speeds, second mark. Today we're going to take a look at AC electricity and the domestic or mains supply. We'll look at what parts are in a plug and looking at the differences between frequency and potential difference which have been confused by many students in recent quizzes. We'll look at the function of the different parts of the plug and we'll discuss the difference between direct and alternating PD and how that leads to AC and DC currents. So what do we mean by our alternating and direct? Well, it all comes from the type of supply we've got. Okay, so in a circuit, you can have a battery or you can have a generator. And each one provides a push to the electrons. That push from a battery is in a single direction. And the size of the current should be steady from a battery so that gives us a direct current so it's a direct a push in one direction a direct pd driving the current in one direction around the circuit with a generator on the other hand the electrons move one way and the other constantly change in direction okay Imagine moving a bike chain backwards and forwards. So none of the electrons are actually traveling anywhere, but that oscillation, that backwards and forwards movement, transfers energy to your load. In this case, a bulb. Okay, it could be a motor, it could be a buzzer, it could be a laptop, whatever. That current is delivered, delivering energy as it oscillates backwards and forwards. Now in England, that change of direction happens 50 times a second. Okay, so an oscillating or alternating current, constantly changing direction and size from a battery, a steady current in a single direction. We sum that all up, an AC, Alternating current repeatedly reverses direction continuously. The number of times it does that in a second is called the frequency. And in England, in the UK, that is 50 times a second, so 50 hertz. The voltage, on the other hand, is the potential difference. Not to be confused. That is 230 volts in the UK, but although that's the number we give in exam answers, that is really only an average value. The size is constantly changing. And we can look at that in another lesson. Moving on to plugs, we need to look at the components, so which wires and fuse and case, and what each one is used for. We need to know where they go. So to help us with that, we have a few little mnemonics. So if we look on the left, these blue, L for left, that is your neutral wire, okay? L for left, 
L in the word blue. Similarly, we have R in the word brown. So that's the right side. And that's your live wire. And then at the top, your stripy wire, yellow and green, is your earth. Okay. The terminals bits the screws go into are made of brass. They are chosen because they are good conductors. Conversely, the case and the covering of each wire, the installation of the wires is made of plastic because that is a good insulator. So what does each part do? Well, as we said before, three key parts. That brown wire on the right is the live, and it carries that alternating potential difference from the supply to your device. The neutral wire completes the circuit. Without the neutral, there's nowhere for current to go, but the live is dangerous whether your switch is on or not. We'll come back to that in a second. So the neutral completes the circuit and the earth is there as a safety feature. It stops the case of the appliance, not of the uh, plug itself, the appliance becoming live. If a wire gets loose, you could have current going through the case and into you and the earth provides a safe path for current to go to ground, to go to earth. Finally, we have the fuse, a thin wire which stops the flow of current if that is too high again, for a safety feature. And summarise in each of the wires, the brown wire for live, green and yellow for earth, and blue for neutral. In terms of voltages, the live wire is usually at around 230 volts. Again, as we said before, this varies, but in the exam answer, say 230. The neutral wire is at zero volts. Okay. And the earth is also at zero volts, but, and this is the key thing, it only carries current if there's a fault. Most of the time, there's no current going through that wire. There is through the live and the neutral. So as I said there, the earth wire is providing a safe route for current to flow. Okay, and this is the example of why we need it. So imagine one of this, say the live wire in here, if that bro broke off, the live wire is always dangerous, even when your switches are off. If that live wire touches a metal case of your cooker, a current's gonna flow through the cooker and electrocute you perhaps. But, if we have an earth wire attached to that metal case, instead of traveling out of the case and through you, that current can be channeled safely to ground. Here's a question for you. Some appliances don't have an earth wire, okay? You might see a symbol like this, two squares, one inside the other on the electrical device at home. That tells you that it doesn't have an earth wire. Why might that be? Your phone chargers, usually, are the same. Look at this one. This plug has two pins in the bottom for the earth and, sorry, for the live and the neutral. But there is a plastic placeholder where there would be normally an earth pin. Why is that? Is someone just cutting costs? Well, yes, they are, but they're cutting costs in a safe way. They don't need an earth wire because of plastic. If the device you're using is made of plastic, it's an insulator. There's no danger if the case is touched by a live wire. So, in usually in low voltage appliances or ones with plastic cases, there will only be two wires inside your plug, okay? Because the earth is not needed. Usually in the exam, we'll be talking about a standard three pin, three wire setup, but be aware that 
some things don't have that earth wire. Finally, we move on to fuses. Okay, so what is a fuse? Well, usually, and this is one with a clear case we can see inside it, it's a thin wire of a fixed size, a fixed diameter, which is chosen because it has a certain value of resistance. Okay, and when a certain amount of current passes through that wire, it heats up to the point at which it melts. So you can see in the bottom here is a blown fuse. The wire inside is melted because too much current is flowing through. In the middle here, we've got three standard size fuses, three, five, and 13, found in many electrical appliances in your home. The fuse will prevent too much current flowing through it because it melts. Now it might take a little while to melt, depends on the value of the current, but it, once it's melted, no current can flow through there. When you're selecting a fuse, you must beware to select an appropriate value. So a value of current that is higher than the operating current of your device. Otherwise, whenever you turn the device on, it will simply melt. So that brings us to the end. Have a look now at the questions on the forms quiz associated with this task. Make sure you've made notes on each of the topics discussed in today's lesson and that you have a fully labeled diagram of a plug like this one detailing each of the components, its location, and what it does. Please upload these to your correct page in Class Notebook and complete the forms quiz at the end. Thank you for your attention and happy social distancing.